<laughs> I guess the buzzer hit, so that means it's game time. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Friday Night Live. I'm your host, Connie Cola, and this is our first live Facebook show, and it's July 17, 2020. We are so glad that you're with us. Thanks for being here. If you're looking for information on the real estate market, you are tuning in to the right place. We are broadcasting live from Scottsdale, Arizona, and we have a great 30-minute uh, program for you. We're uh, grabbing some people now online. We've had 492 people that uh, have kind of engaged in, uh, in this as we've started. So that's kind of fun. So thank you all for being here with us. We appreciate it. Um, as we wait for people to kind of come on, I want to give you the rundown of what we're going to talk about today. First of all, some new data has just been released about where the real estate market really is headed in the next 12 months. So we'll deep dive into that and see what that means for you and for housing prices and rentals as we move into the next year. We're also going to look at how COVID-19 has impacted the real estate market so far. And we'll hear from Yvette Bradshaw. She's one of our realtors here on our team at the Connie Cola Group about virtual showings. How are those going? How are people dealing, both sellers and buyers, with all of this and trying to buy a home while social distancing? And then attorney and real estate agent as well, Jeff Hernandez, also of the Connie Cola Group. We've got the whole team here tonight will be joining us to discuss the forbearance program the tenant eviction deadline, and more about the CARES Act and what it could mean for you. So all of those things coming up. Plus, uh, towards the end, we've got some great resources for you so that you can stay connected to the market and really understand what's happening in the next days, weeks, and months to come. So some super cool tools that we've built for you right on our website that will give you a lot of data there too. All right, let's see. We've got more people jumping in here, so we'll take just a second here. I want to ask um, a question about the schools real quick, and I want to get your pulse on this. So if you're watching at home, jump into the chat and tell us what you think about what's happening with S SUSD schools. There's been so much uh, debate and, and drama, and you know we're all trying to figure out what's the best thing for teachers, what's the best thing for kids, and then you know what's the timeline and how and how do we kind of move forward here? So SUSD sent this out to parents and really asked, you have two choices here and which would be the best for you and for your family. So choice one, model A here, would mean that school starts on the 10th and then we would be online for that. And then as we get towards the uh, beginning of September, um, September 8th, we would go to school full time in attendance with teachers and curriculum in the schools and make sure that the safety measures are appropriate and there's physical distancing and masks and sealing, things like that to kind of keep people healthy. So it's a late start to the school um, as far as being in person. So we can kind of gauge where we are with what's happening with COVID. The other model, model B, is Scottsdale online learning. And this would be a one semester commitment. So school would start on the 10th of August and it would be all online and it would be um, as, as uh, uh, acrimonious as it possibly can be. Everyone would have schedules they would have to adhere to and we would try to keep everything at home for the first semester and then readjust as we go from there. So if you have a comment on what you think about all of that, let us know. We'd love to hear from you and, um, and find out what your pulse is on that. We're discussing that in our class uh, what class we should be doing as we kind of head closer to school too, because we've got a couple high school students um, and we're trying to figure out which works best for each of them. And one may want one and one may want the other. So what does that all mean, right? Okay, well, I think we'll jump in here and get started now. If you're just joining us, I'm Scottsdale Realtor Connie Cola of the Connie Cola Group at Launch Real Estate in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm also a bit of a data nerd, if you know me. So if you've joined us before, you're going to hear me explain that we, we need to go back to understand where we are, to understand where we're going, right? That's kind of how we evaluate history. We need to know where we were and then where we're headed to really understand the value of the future. So we're gonna do that just a bit now. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the year. And before COVID-19 hit, the housing market in the Valley was extremely strong. We started the year off with lots of buyers looking for homes. In fact, um, buyers were buying faster than new homes were coming on the market. So by February, Inventory was down 35% in Scottsdale and Paradise Valley compared to last year. And this gives you a good idea of where we were. So in 2020, 
uh, we were down to 2,075 homes accumulatively. And last year at this time, we were up to about 3,188. So you can see the difference. We needed more homes to sell. So why was the market so strong? Well, low interest rates, of course, that's really helping to fuel a buying frenzy for sure. In fact, my team actually had sold triple the amount of homes in January, February, and the first half of March before all this hit than we did last year. So triple the amount that tells you like how fast things were selling and people were jumping in because the money was cheap. We were completely out of homes to sell by the time COVID-19 hit. So COVID hit the valley in March and we all were evaluating what's gonna happen, right? What does this mean? Is it a marathon or is it a sprint? And by March 30th, the announcement came that we need to stay at home and that would happen beginning the next Tuesday. So of course, the first thing we all think about is we need toilet paper. <laughs> so yes, Will Ferrell, you scored, <laughs> we need toilet paper. And actually I think we all ran out and tried to get some. So for many people, it did take the month of March and a little bit of April to kind of decide if we should be taking this seriously and really how long will this last? And you know, we're all still asking how long will it last? But for investors with multiple vacation properties, it was really a time to take a look at how long will this last? And more importantly, now that everybody's gone home before even a single bat was swung, what does this mean with no tourists coming to the valley for multiple houses, lots of VRBOs, Airbnbs out there? And so a lot of those type houses came on the market behind the scenes in April and in the beginning of May. And that kind of helped fuel what was about to happen again. So by May 15th now, we started to open up and it was really full steam ahead because now we had the inventories, we had these pent up buyers and they're ready to move forward again and home sales rebounded in all price ranges. So it was a mad dash. May start, st saw the largest comeback between 500 and a million dollars. That was really our biggest place where we saw the biggest bump. And numbers of accepted contracts during that time soared ahead 167% from the first week of April to the first week of June over what we would normally see in Scottsdale compared to March. So year over year, if you look historically, was, was that just an anomaly? Was it because of the pandemic or was this just at the beginning a strong year and going to be a strong year as we continued on? Well, we really think it, it was an exceptional beginning to 2020 and then it continued into March and April and May. And we were actually up 58% higher in inventory of new sales than we were last year at this time. So it, everything was going really well. Now, even more dramatic, according to the Cromford report, June purchase contracts over a million are up 85% over last year. Why? I mean, when you look at higher priced houses, they're always gonna take longer to sell. There are fewer people that can afford them, so that makes sense. So why this huge increase in home sales over a million dollars in what we call the luxury market? Well, interest rates, first of all, were extremely low, historically low. So cheap cash, people want to pay attention to that and jump in while they can. Interest rates, that was a big reason why. And then the other reason really was we kind of had had now up to six weeks, depending on how soon you started to quarantine, to really get to know our homes again. And in some cases, get to know the people in the homes again. And so people were deciding, you know what? Life is too short. I don't want to be in California where taxes are high. I don't want to be in Chicago where there's snow in the winter. I really want to live the life I want to live. And a lot of people want to be here when they retire and they just decided to fast track it. So that's happening. Plus job growth, right? We're really optimistic that job growth is going to continue with this all ends. And so I think at this point, people are thinking we're coming here from jobs. We're coming here from lifestyle and we're coming here because the interest rates are low right now. So timing is right. So where does that put us then as we head into the middle of July? Well, we're really back to that place now where inventory is low, meaning buyers are still coming. Interest rates are even lower. I don't know if you saw it this week, but they dipped below 3% to 2.98%. I can't, I don't even think that's ever, ever happened. So here we are and you can buy a house with that. And so people are, and I'm out of houses to sell again. So if you're looking, let me know. So what happens then in the next three months, six months, 
12 months, right? What, what are we going to see and where is the fallout and the ripples from all of this? Well, we're starting to see small indicators now. So the robust housing market is starting to shift just a bit. And I say a tiny bit because I'm an optimist, but prices week over week are starting to trend just slightly downward. Um, CoreLogic, which is one of the most influential housing data providers in the nation, now expects us to see a nationwide drop in home prices of about 6.6% from May of 2020 to May of 2021. That's a pretty big drop. Let's put that into perspective, kind of historical perspective for you. What does that look like? Well, it would be the greatest year over year drop since September of 2009. And we know what happened. We were here, we felt it in that time period. Houses at that time period, his, over time in um, September of 2009, nationwide, and some areas were hit even harder, as you know, uh, but we declined about 7.6% from the year prior, from 2008. So let's look at that in numbers. If you have a $500,000 home and the price drops 6.6%, that's about $33,000. So is it huge? For some people, it is huge. It's definitely impactful and it's just something to watch right now because this is our, our first prognostication of, of what's to come. So there are three notes to think about here with Arizona specifically when, when we look at all of that and, and where we're headed next and what could happen with us. Arizona and Florida are facing the perfect storm because we've got elevated COVID-19 cases. Our infection rates are really high. And what that means is it's going to take longer for us to come back. It, it kills me when I say that because I think of all of the local businesses, the beautiful restaurants that it took so long for us to get up and running. And, and in this town, we've got more restaurants, beautiful places to go to dinner. They're all struggling right now. So the longer it takes for us to come back from all of these cases, the longer it takes for local businesses to open. And that's going to hurt. Now, the other thing is COVID-19 hit the valley as our tourism season was in high swing, right? Thankfully, uh, the Barrett-Jackson car auction, the Waste Management Phoenix Open, the Scottsdale Arabian Horse Show, even the first part of spring training, the behind the scenes stuff where the support staff and the players were here for a month before COVID-19 hit, but then completely left. All those things at least happened before spring training was missed. So tourism dried up and the valley was impacted dramatically by that. But at least we got a little bit of a start to it. But that is our highest season and it is going to hurt. So who would be the most risk in our state? What communities are the most fragile? Uh, CoreLogic, again, has some data on that. And what they're saying is that uh, communities like Prescott, Lake Havasu City, Kingman, those areas, those small towns that rely on spring and summer tourism to get them through the year are probably going to be hit the hardest. Now, some mortgage indexes are also showing a decline in the number of loan applications in the last two weeks. And, and that's an indicator that buyer slowdown could be happening as we look at what happens next. Buyers wondering, are home prices going to go down farther? Should I wait? Should I jump in now? What? Where should I get into this, right? So what does it mean for you? Well, if you love your home and you're not moving, then it's just good knowledge to have, right? We're going to rebound from this. Everything will be better. The sun will come out tomorrow. This is a little bit of a blip that we need to be aware of. And most experts do expect that all of this will calm down dramatically when a vaccine is discovered. And as you know, there are a lot of companies out there worldwide right now that are working towards that. So that's all good news. Uh, the other thing is, if, if you look at where we are as the market, we're so lucky that our inventory was low, that our prices were holding, that interest rates are low, that buyers are out there because you know the laws of supply and demand. And if the market was saturated with houses, prices would go down, but they're not. So at this point, everything looks really good. So if you want to sell or if you need to sell, or you're contemplating selling over the next year because you're retiring, uh, you may want to give us a call and, and we can review where you are and what that really means for you. So do I think that this is a time to panic? That's a question I get a lot when people ask us to come and speak to them about the market. No, I don't think this is a time to panic. When you look at the stock market, 
the stock market has made up all of its losses already and it's a year of optimism. You know, it, it, it makes no sense in what's happening right now that the stock market is doing well, but it is. The housing market doing well. So at this point, everything looks pretty good, but just know there could be a little something on the horizon for us. Okay, so on that note, I want to bring in our realtor, Yvette Bradshaw. She's on our team to talk about buying and selling in this time of COVID-19. And um, Yvette, are y'all masked up? Me too. Here we are. <laughs> I'm all masked up. Nice to see you. <laughs> you, too, you too. I'm so glad that you're with us. Um, well, let's start there with the masks and the gloves. And, you know, people are so resilient. They're they're adapting to the new normal. And, of course, we at the Connie Cola Group are always making sure that we give our, our uh, clients the white glove treatment. Um, but how are people dealing with all of the cleanliness and strangers in their home? You know, actually, people are taking it in stride, Connie. We're asking our buyers to wear face covering and gloves whenever they're entering a seller's home. And one thing that I'm able to do is by arriving early, I'm able to minimize the touch points by opening all the doors and turning on all the lights for the sellers to tour. And of course, we then wipe down all the doorknobs and switches and even the front door handles when we're leaving the home. Our sellers have a great deal of confidence um, that we're taking good care of them and our buyers appreciate it as well. Yeah, I think so, too. And I think everybody's starting to get used to that new normal. Um, yes. Speaking of the new normal, um, you know, having been a former TV anchor, I'm pretty used to this whole virtual thing. Um, but for a lot of people, it was a little bit of a struggle, understandably. Um, how are buyers and sellers de dealing with the virtual tours? And is it helping them or hurting them as we look at houses? You know, ultimately, it gives all of our clients a safer option in the process. When we were using the virtual tour option for our clients previously, we did it as needed prior to the cautious efforts due to COVID-19. This, this time we're wearing gloves and protective face covering. And there are several industry apps that are available to realtors and there's always the common phone apps like FaceTime. So for our clients that may have been uncertain of the option for such a large purchase that they're making, Mm -hmm. We have taken extra time to build their confidence by asking more detailed questions about their desired lifestyle in their home and in their immediate community. That's ultimately giving us a chance to share with them the level of detail that maybe they would have missed had they walked into a home and been overwhelmed by everything around them. And the important elements, of course, not being overlooked, but the details are pretty key. Yeah, we can focus on one room at a time. And it's interesting to see how people are really getting used to this because they'll say, oh, OK, but put the computer up or your phone up over the fence and show us the sunset or what does the neighbor's yard look like? So, you mm -hmm. know, we're really getting used to that virtual tour. Yes, indeed we are. And there's a benefit associated with it. Right. So for a potential buyer, you know, in their focus on how many rooms there are and what the actual layout of the house may be, they may overlook some of those details that are important in their selection process. So a realtor, knowing the needs of their client, can take the time to highlight those kinds of details like upgrades in the home, the quality of space, the quantity of space, any amenities that might be there, and even em emphasize some of the simple joys that that particular home will offer, like a view of the beautiful western sky at sunset. Yeah. Perfect. You're right. I had one person actually um, asked me, what does the refrigerator, what does it sound like? Is it too loud or is it not too loud? So we were right there. Yeah, by the yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been kind of fun. I, I'm enjoying it a lot. There, there is a couple, there are a couple little downsides to it. And one, I would say, um, even, you know, you're familiar with this deal. A couple of weeks ago, we had a house that was under contract. Um, and then the people came in from out of town to actually see it for the first time during the home inspection and were shocked by how big the house was and decided yeah. it wasn't the house for them. So there are those those downsides to virtual tours, too. It's important to really get into the details of it all. Yes, indeed. Yeah. The other thing is, I think, um, you know, when we we're talking about that house, the deal falling apart, the nice thing about that one was we had a backup offer in place and we try to do that with all of our deals. Right now, it's really important that your agent, whoever they are, try to put a backup offer in place. Why is that important, Yvette? You know, a backup offer makes the difference of confidence and utter disappointment if a deal falls through for your client. Yeah. We always keep the door open and we seek backup offers. 
But just recently, having that backup offer meant no additional open houses to mm -hmm. tour, um, no additional visits for uh, strangers to come through your home in an effort to sell your home. Mm -hmm. And it also made the difference with just a few weeks being added to the closing time frame instead of a few months. So that's our way of making a difference for our clients. Yeah, I think so too. It's it's a it's a good recommendation for people out there who um, have their house on the market that when you get an offer, let the agent have a couple more days to try to get that backup offer of a few more people through just so that you're kind of stacked up because people may be losing their job. Things can go sideways really fast right now. And it's important that you're as secure as you can be on the market for the shortest amount of time. And that's one of the ways we do that. Yvette, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you All soon. Right. All right. Okay, so my next guest is attorney Jeff Hernandez. He is also a realtor here on our team. And we're going to get into some of the nuts and bolts of what the government's been doing now to help shore up this economy and keep people uh, on, you know, uh, flush as we kind of move forward. So, um, Jeff, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Hello, Connie Cola. How are you? Jeff Hernandez. Um, let's talk about the CARES Act, the forbearance program, uh, unemployment benefits, and residential evictions. That's all I need from you. So we'll start with unemployment benefits first. Okay, I get all the gloom and doom. Thank you very much for all that. Yeah, unfortunately, we're, we're kind of headed into some serious weighty stuff here. So let me talk about the CARES Act and what it, what it was, what it was enacted to do, and what it's, what it's done over the last few months. As you recall, in March, the uh, coronavirus epidemic hit full force. The federal government had to step in. They enacted the CARES Act, which was uh, $2 trillion of money infused into the economy to plug the holes and to try and stop three main things from happening. One, rise in unemployment. Number two, uh, provided mortgage relief. And number three, was intended to uh, forestall evictions from happening and keep people in their homes. Yep. The first thing I want to talk about is unemployment benefits. Now, the um, unemployment benefits that were enacted uh, under the CARES Act were in addition to the state unemployment insurance in Arizona. Uh, in Arizona, many people know that the most anyone can collect on a weekly basis under Arizona's scheme is $240 a week. Mm -hmm. The CARES Act uh, added an additional $600 a week on top of that. So people were collecting up to $840 a week. Uh, on unemployment, which was pretty good. It kept people putting money into the economy. The economy yeah. is continuing to roll along. It's not dropping off a cliff. However, at the end of this month, unless the Congress uh, enacts further legislation to forestall the deadline, that $600 a week is gonna go away. So the, the CARES Act will, will sunset at the end of this month unless something is done. So yeah. a lot of people will be out of money and a lot of people will be having some difficulty paying rent and paying their mortgages and buying groceries and anything like that. So it's, there could be a significant domino effect if that act is not uh, continued. Yeah, it's. I think it's going to be catastrophic for a lot of people. I remember when this all started, um, just on a side note, someone had said to us, in fact, it might have even been um, John Batistas at launch, who you know has ridden out these storms before as a longtime member of the Valley, um, gave good advice to a lot of people and said, look at your credit cards, look at uh, your bank statements, look at your subscriptions to different things that you have or clubs that you belong to and, and cut all those out just just cut them all out and, and save as much money as you can because we just don't know what's going to happen. That's and I think right. that was really good advice. And we're kind of at that place now where if the money runs out, a lot of people are going to be devastated. So yeah, that's um, right. And people are going to be in trouble. Okay. Yep. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, uh, what banks are doing kind of behind the scenes right now with the CARES Act, because we've got a lot of mortgages that could default. And, and I know that was supposed to end the entrance to it. If you wanted to apply for it, the, it's coming up. The 25th is the last day you can do it, right? The, the forbearance program, well, there's two things. Uh, the forbearance program ends at the end of August, August 31st. Um, and if you haven't applied for forbearance because you've been affected by COVID-19, you better get in before the end of the end of August because that program's going to go away again, unless it's unless it's extended by the federal government. And what that does is it allows you up to one year of forbearance without any penalty, mm -hmm. so long as you are um, your loan is is backed by the federal government. So if you're if you have a loan with a private bank or something that's not a federal entity such as Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, HUD, VA, etc. 
any of those uh, other entities do not necessarily have to comply with the CARES Act, although they are they are pretty much tracking what the uh, federally insured banks are allowing uh, for forbearance purposes. Yeah, a lot of them are trying to, right? That's right. They're, yeah. they're trying to be good citizens and do the right thing for people um, under these circumstances. So this is, this is an anomaly. This is an unusual set of circumstances and the banks are, are stepping up. Now, private banks treat people differently than the federal government does uh, under their federally insured loans. So there are, th there are things that people can still do under the CARES Act. Um, there are repayment plans that people can enter into, which allows them to pay any uh, uh, due amounts over time. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a deferment plan that allows people to put any amounts overdue at the back of the loan. And it either, it either gets paid at, when the loan comes due or it gets extended further. Uh, and there's certainly the loan modification, which allows people to rework their loans, uh, work the interest rate differently, uh, extend the term of the loan or do whatever it is to keep a person in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, banks offering all these options, but uh, the ones that are federally insured um, do have to offer, offer these options under the, under the CARES Act. So, yeah. uh, In the meantime, get... banks are stockpiling billions of dollars because they see what's going to happen in the future. Tell me about that. Yeah, as you know, um, you know, the banks have their fingers on the pulse of what's going on in the economy. Um, there's this graphic that just came up here showing the percentage of mortgages and forbearance currently since the start of the COVID-19 epidemic. And as you see on the bottom left-hand corner, um, as of March 8th, the number of loans that were uh, mortgages that were in forbearance was below 1%. Tell me about that. Um, yeah. Since, and since then it's gone up to about 8.2% as of July 5th. Uh, let me give you what, what that means in terms of raw numbers. Roughly 8.2% uh, of loan balances are owed by an estimated 4.1 million homeowners. Mm -hmm. um, that equates to about $4.1 billion a month in loans that are not being paid back. So wow. that's quite a bit of money that's not being put back into the system. Banks are having to front that and certainly if um, these loans come due and are not paid and they go belly up, then the federal government insuring those loans has to pay those loans. So yeah. uh, ultimately, the taxpayer pays in the end if those loans don't get paid back. So that's a that's a problem. That's a that's an issue that needs to be resolved by the by the Congress um, by extending the act or infusing more money into the economy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's um, we're, we're on a bit of a slippery slope on some of this. Okay. Um, I, speaking of which, I want to talk about the residential eviction moratorium, too, because that was supposed to end on the 22nd, uh, just in a couple of days from now. That's been extended. What's the new date? And then what will that mean for people? OK, well, there, there are two issues here. One is the federal moratorium and then there's a the state. So the state moratorium on evictions. Uh, was extended from July 22nd until October 31st. Governor Ducey enacted that uh, yesterday. Uh, what that means is if you were affected directly or indirectly by COVID-19, whether you got sick, you had a relative that got sick that you need to take care of, somehow your business was affected, you were laid off, et cetera, any of those uh, factors will, will uh, come into play when, uh, if and when you, you cannot pay your rent. Mm -hmm. and you need, there, there are some uh, procedures you need to follow by notifying your landlord in writing, et cetera. Um, the eviction moratorium means that the, the courts cannot enforce um, an eviction action. So the constables will not move, they won't, they won't be moving on getting people kicked out of their houses. Now that's been extended until October 31st. Yeah. So there's some relief. Um, unfortunately, landlords are suffering the consequences of that. Um, and you know, as a, as a side note, uh, there was a prediction that as of the end of July, about 5,000 eviction actions were scheduled to be filed. Um, and so by the end of October, that's that's likely to double. So that's going to be a huge impact on the court system and certainly on renters and landlords. And it's it's a slippery slope, like you said. And those 5,000 are here in Maricopa County. So that's just Maricopa County. Yeah. Now, on the federal level, the again, under the CARES Act, the moratorium lasted there were two different um, deadlines. One was at the end of July yeah. for multifamily dwellings that were that were um, that had loans on them, backed by the federal government. Again, um, for multifamily dwellings, that's apartment houses, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, the moratorium is going to end at the end of July, so 
people can uh, the landlords can start evicting people at the end of July under those particular circumstances in states other than Arizona that don't have an otherwise state moratorium. Yeah. Uh, for single family dwellings, it's, it's extended to the end of August. So that's not affecting Arizona so much, but it, it is something to be aware of. And it's just going to, it's going to impact, impact the nation. And certainly a lot of people are going to have some difficulty finding homes and getting back into the, into the swing of things with the economy. Yeah, we have a lot of moving parts here with all of this and some relief deadlines that have been extended and some so far that haven't. So I know you'll be watching that. Um, Jeff writes a lot for us as well on ConnieColaGroup.com. There's a news you can use tab and you'll usually find um, an update from him quite often on what's happening out there, especially here in Arizona. So we appreciate that. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Connie. All right. So what does all of this then mean for all of us? Well, it means we may see a little bit of a hit here in the real estate market. It means some people will have to, or some people will want to rethink life just a bit, how we live it, where we live it, how big of a house we need. Some retirees are deciding that it's time to downsize now and, and make life a little bit easier for them. While others who have expanded families are using this opportunity to upsize or relocate to their ideal community. In other words, the real estate market marches on. And at the Connie Cola Group, we specialize in helping evaluate your situation and strategize with you and then create a plan to get you to where you wanna go. We work really hard to provide solid information that you can hang on to and resources for you that you can use. If you want to sell your house, we're actually putting a link um, in our website in the in the Facebook chat area here for you, and it'll help you get started. We've created a home valuation for you on our website, and we'll show you what your home is worth. We also want to talk to you a little bit about that. When people just throw a home valuation out there, they don't know how many upgrades you've done, how long you've lived in the house, the value of what you see the home as being. So it's important that we talk after you click that link and kind of walk through the stages because we want to know what makes your home so special. It's, it's important. And then we'll put a comprehensive plan to click together and put that in place and get your home listed with beautiful marketing materials and a robust ad campaign backed by a team with really impressive negotiating skills and the ability to get your home sold for the highest price possible in the shortest amount of time with the least amount of stress to you. It's what we're all about. So selling is a move to consider when inventory is low, uh, house prices are strong and interest rates are low. And all three of those are in place right now. Plus, we've got a lot of buyers coming in. Likewise, if you are a buyer and you want to know more about Scottsdale and Paradise Valley, you want to deep dive into what Silverleaf looks like, um, you can do that as well. We've put an awful lot of resources on our website and we've got a link here for you as well. You can book an appointment with us to get started and we'll sit down with you on video wherever you are, Chicago, California, New York, wherever you're joining us from with you and your family and get to know what's important to you in a home. And then our team will get to work and we'll find that dream home for you. And we may even show it to you virtually. Um, if you want to know more about us and you're not interested in selling your house at all, but who is Connie Cola and who are her teammates anyway, you can jump onto our website at ConnieColaGroup.com. We've got a lot of great tools here for you. Be sure to look at the property search there. You can see the maps right there. That's the Scottsdale map. You can see Scottsdale in the uh, search guide. And so the whole map comes up and you can really get a good idea of what you're looking at. And then homes on the side there. And you can go by any price range and details that you want. Jump over into the neighborhoods page and look at this, Ancala, Arcadia, Desert Ridge, Fountain Hills, you name it, we've got a lot of activity there for you where you can deep dive into each of the neighborhoods and get to know them a little bit better. Here's Stonegate. So Stonegate, I'm a preferred realtor in Stonegate. You see the map, where it is, how many houses are there, what kind of houses are there, and what's the price per square foot there anyway? Stonegate is a neighborhood of 900 single family homes on tree lined streets with Olympic sized swimming pool, tennis, pickleball. Uh, those are all pieces that you're going to learn by jumping in there and really understanding it so that you can get a better idea of what this city is all about. We sell Scottsdale. So this is our town and we're a wealth of information for you here. It's, it's what we do. Then over on the news you can use, you can see a lot of articles there we just talked about that we're writing for you as well. So you stay up to date on what's happening in the market.
Anyway, some good tools to get you started, all for free. Take a look at them. Use them as you'd like to. Whew. Okay, did anybody grab wine? Did we bring wine tonight? I put a little ice in mine because it was pretty hot outside today here in the valley. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us for now. Um, we've got a lot of people jumping in, and we're glad that you're with us. So call us anytime. Um, the buyer link, the seller link, it's there. The website is there for more information for you. And of course, I've got my phone, and it's never far away from me as well. So we always answer it. At the Connie Cola Group, we move you forward. It's what we do best. And if you want to make a move, give us a call. We are always here and ready to help you. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hi, Connie. Hi, I wanted to answer your question. Yes, it is a great time to buy or sell in the Valley. And here's why. Interest rates are historically low and they won't stay there forever. And for sellers, we need more homes on the market. So let's get your house listed today and make it stand out. The Connie Cola Group at Launch Real Estate, we move you forward. It's what we do best.